okay good morning uh, so in today's uh, discussion we are going to talk about uh, objects uh, moving under the action of gravity okay or motion under the gravity motion under under the gravity when gravity is the only force acting is also known as uh, then those objects are said to be uh, falling objects right when your object is falling from a building or from a height uh, without any other force interacting with them then they are simply known then they are simply called as falling object and only the force of gravity is acting on them so we will uh, relate the motion of a freely falling body to the motion with the constant acceleration we will calculate the displacement velocity and time at various points in the motion of a freely falling object then we will compare the motions of different objects in free fall in this session uh, okay so what do motion graphs of an object in free fall look like how would it look like okay first of all uh, what does a graph of an object with a constant velocity will look like what is the what is the displacement time graph will look like for constant velocity so this displacement upon time is the velocity right so uh, slope of displacement time graph is going to be your velocity and when your velocity is constant that means slope is going to be constant in other words the line uh, the graph of the motion time graph for the straight for the uh, constant velocity is going to be a straight line but when uh, velocity is not constant but is changing constantly then how would the graph look like it would look like a curve like that of a square curve something like that of a square curve right so now yeah and what will be the velocity time graph will look like for a constant acceleration or if there is constant increase in velocity how would its graph look like it would look like a uh, straight line your velocity time graph will also look like a straight line for constant acceleration right uh, what was the acceleration what is the definition of acceleration acceleration is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time right so in a given second how much velocity an object is gaining or uh, losing is known as the acceleration or retardation position time graph is going to look like a curve in the first one it is the example of retardation right so your slope of the curve is constantly falling but the rate but the uh, amount of slope is changing why because velocity is changing constantly uh, whereas in case of your but in this case your velocity time graph will look like that of a straight line but because we are uh, experiencing a retardation so it will have a negative slope that means it will it will be drawn in the fourth quadrant in the coordinate in the quadrant system right it will be drawn towards the bottom okay so when we are experiencing a free fall that means we are when we are experiencing free experiencing a free fall that means we are only the we are only under the effect of gravity so what ex, what acceleration we are experiencing we are going through acceleration due to gravity okay we are having acceleration due to gravity so if we are coming downward okay downward if we take the downward acceleration as a negative right so 
at every second our increase in the downward velocity is 9.8 meter per second okay in case of free fall in case of free fall our velocity in the downward direction or towards the earth is constantly increasing at the rate of 9.8 meter per second so now tell me when objects are free falling if we have a heavier object and then we have a lighter object okay so uh, which one of the object will reach the ground or the surface first if both are uh, if both are uh, let loose from a similar height okay if both are uh, thrown from or released from a same height and if there is no friction then which mass or which object will reach the surface first so intuitively we think that it would be higher uh, the object with more mass will be reaching the surface right because it has most it has more mass more mass means it has more more force because it feels like it that when we are uh, holding or lifting object that are heavy heavy or that have more mass they tends to come down very fast that those mass are or those or those objects are uh, very difficult to keep uh, in their position okay so it feels like the objects having the more mass will uh, reach the surface of the earth but that is not the case why because if the mass is increasing okay if the mass is increasing the force is also increasing right because uh, formula for force is your mass into acceleration mass into acceleration so but your mass is the definition of mass is that it is the measure of inertia right so more the mass more it will require uh, it will require more uh, force right it will require more force to move it if the mass is more because it, it is having more mass so even if the force is increased in case of more mass even if the force is increased its acceleration is going to remain constant right because force is equal to mass into acceleration so if force is increased the force is increased when the objects are falling downward okay falling freely so if force is increased what happens that it is due to the increase in mass but the acceleration will remain constant okay so if there are object of 20 newton weight and 10 newton weight that means in one object uh, a force is acting uh, 20 and in another object object is act, uh, the force is acting uh, 10 newton in the downward direction right so in object one force is double that of the force in the second object having the 10 newton weight right so force is double in the first case so it seems like yeah because force is double it should move uh, more rapidly okay but the thing is its force is doubled because its mass has that because its mass was double okay it was the double in mass the first object was double in mass so instead of increasing the acceleration acceleration remains the same but due to the double due to double the mass of the second object it was experiencing more force right because force is equal to mass into acceleration so both the object the lighter one or, and the heavier one if ideal conditions are met ideal condition means if there is no uh, resistance or friction or uh, air okay if we fall them in vacuum both the object even if we fell one iron ball and one feather together okay if we let loose or if we throw down these two things 
together from the same height both the things the iron ball as well as the feather will reach the surface of the earth at the same time right so golf ball versus bowling ball you can see here bowling ball has larger mass than the golf ball so which one is more massive your bowling ball is more massive more massive means it it is it has more inertia it has more inertia that means it is resistance to change in its resistance to change its motion okay it is more resistance to change its motion so even if the force is more it will still not change its motion or there will be there will not be a more uh, acceleration as compared to the golf ball why because its mass is increased in this case and mass is the measure of the inertia and inertia is the resistance to the change in motion okay so out of these two which of the object will experience more gravitational force more force will be experienced by the uh, your bowling ball because it has more more mass right it has more mass but will have the same acceleration so mass for the formula for force is mass into acceleration so mass in, of the bowling ball is more so but acceleration is same in the both cases so bowling ball will experience the more mass right so which is the most reluctant to accelerate it is again the bowling ball is most reluctant to accelerate why because it has more mass and by the definition the mass is the me measure of the inertia so it is more resistance or more reluctant to change its motion or in other words to accelerate so how do they respond to gravitational force they they come down to surface of the earth with equal velocity as discussed right even if we take feather instead of this golf ball even then these two uh, objects the feather and the bowling ball will reach the surface of the earth at the same time given there is no other force no resistance that is interfering okay so consider two identical falling objects each of mass m right now consider two more uh, connected together by a tiny thread so in one case these both uh, these both objects are tied together so they have total mass of 2m but in the first one they are separate each having mass m so but they will have the same acceleration right they will have the same acceleration if you throw them in here they will be coming towards uh, downwards the same velocity why or the same acceleration because of the region stated earlier force on the joint balls must be twice the force on one of them right since the mass doubled but the acceleration stayed the same why acceleration stayed the same because mass doubled mass doubled and uh, formula for forces uh, mass into acceleration so if force is doubled it is due to the double mass not due to the acceleration acceleration will remain constant right so because if mass is doubling its axel its inertia is also increasing its inertia is also doubling so even if the force is more acceleration still going to be the same because it has more resistance to change in motion the conclusion from this is that gravitational force must be proportional to mass okay so this is what i was talking about that even if you take a hard iron ball or feather and drop it from the same height from the same elevation they will reach the surface of the earth together given ideal conditions are there but how do we know that the accelerations are the same experiments test show the universality of the free fall is the same for different materials to within 0.0000000001% okay so using different experiment it has been proven that the 
acceleration acceleration or yeah acceleration for the falling objects no matter their weight will be the same so what is free fall so in the absence of air resistance all objects fall to earth with constant acceleration okay the rate of fall is independent of mass so the rate of fall is independent of mass as discussed whether it is a feather or it is a giant elephant or other thing they all will be falling with the same acceleration towards the surface of the earth right so mass does not affect the acceleration with which objects will be falling towards the earth given if there is no friction okay no air resistance in a vacuum heavy objects and light objects fall at the same time the acceleration of a free falling object is the acceleration of the gravity okay so this ex this acceleration this change in this constant change in the velocity or the constant increase in velocity towards the downward direction towards the direction of the earth is the acceleration due to gravity so this acceleration is due to the force of gravity that is pulling the objects down and this is equal to uh, this is denoted by a symbol a small g okay and is equal to 9.81 meter per second square so this is an important value will be used throughout throughout the physics and many other uh, uh, many other uh, fields so it must be so it must be remembered so free fall is the motion of the body when only the force due to gravity is acting on the body right when only force acting on the body is the gravitational force then the motion downward motion towards the earth in our case is known as the free fall okay the acceleration is an object in free fall is called the acceleration due to gravity or free fall acceleration free fall acceleration is denoted by ag generally or g on our surface okay when we are talking about acceleration due to gravity for earth then it is denoted by g otherwise generally it is denoted as ag so free fall acceleration is the same for all the objects regardless of the mass this has been cleared okay uh, free fall acceleration on earth surface is minus 9.81 meter per second square why minus 91 because we are taking upward direction as positive direction and negative direction for the motion as a negative direction okay so at all points in the object motion the object will be experiencing nine minus 9.8 meter per second square of acceleration consider a ball thrown up into the air Right. so when it is thrown into the air its uh, velocity will be constantly decreasing because retardation of 9.8 meter per second square is uh, decreasing its velocity by the rate 9.8 meter per second every second the object will be losing its uh, velocity equal to 9.8 meter per second square okay or in other or in other words it will be gaining velocity in the opposite direction in the downward direction so at one point the object that is thrown in the upward direction will come to the rest and then it will start its journey downward and in that journey its velocity will be constantly increasing with the same rate that is 9.8 meter per second okay so acceleration in the downward direction will be on this 9.81 meter per second square So let us see some simple problems a player hit a volleyball so that it moves with an initial velocity of six meter per second straight upward if the fall start if the ball volleyball starts from two meter above the floor how long will it be in the air before it strikes the floor right it is already at two meter height and it is thrown in the upward direction straight upward direction with six meter per second right so 
at every second its velocity will be decreasing due to the acceleration due to gravity you can see that when we are um, throwing our volleyball towards in uh, towards uh, in the upward direction state of our direction with the initial velocity of 6 meter per second that with the initial velocity of 6 meter per second what happens it will uh, it will start going upward but at the same time it is constantly uh, losing its speed or its speed is reducing with a rate of 9.8 meter 9.81 meter per second <clears throat> right so we have initial velocity that is 6 meter per second acceleration that is acceleration due to gravity minus 9.81 so what is delta y delta y we can find out <clears throat> simply by v square minus u square equal to 2s okay so for, from that uh, you can do the calculation okay and after that when we find out the delta y we add it to the initial height that the object was at that is 2 meter and so the downward journey becomes downward length or downward height or the downward uh, length of the journey now becomes the total height that the object reached from the surface of the ground okay so from that we can find out the time and add up the time so that will be the time the object uh, remained in the air okay so v square minus uh, u square equal to 2s it is going to give you the uh the uh, height that it uh, reaches from above the two meter okay then you add that height to the initial height that is two meter then you get the total downward path or length of the total downward path from so now you have the total downward path so you can get the to time of travel it took from the highest point to the surface by using the equation but uh by using the equation uh, s is equal to ut plus half at u square or v yeah s is equal to ut plus half at u square you can find out the time uh, and that is how you are going to get the <clears throat> total time the object remained in air before touching the ground okay so is there any other equation that would answer this equation in single step so let us see summary of the graphical analysis of the linear motion so we have a graph uh, position time graph on the y-axis we have position that is the x and on the x-axis we have the time so um, for the constant acceleration for the constant acceleration we can see that the velocity uh, sorry for the constant velocity we can see that the position time graph would be a straight line right and its slope is going to be equal to the velocity for the constant velocity uh, for the constant velocity case okay so this is a graph of this is a graph of x versus t x is the position and t is the time for an object moving with constant velocity okay the velocity is the slope of the x t curve simple so now come comparison of velocity time and uh, position time curve so on the left hand side you have velocity time curve on the right hand side you have the position time curve okay for the same motion so the instantaneous velocity is and so instantaneous velocity is what velocity at a particular time so that as we discussed in uh, previous lecture instantaneous velocity is given by the tangent at a point to the uh, line to the curve of velocity uh, to the curve of displacement time graph okay so the tangent at a point is going to give you instant velocity at that point okay so you can see in the left of velocity time graph the object is moving with the constant acceleration up from o to a and this graph correspond to this curve that is that is increasing from o, uh, o to a in position time graph 
then from a to b its velocity is constant whereas corresponding uh, line between a and b then between b and c you can see that velocity is again decreasing right in the velocity time graph and it is corresponding to again a curve that whose slope is decreasing over time in the position time graph and then then again in velocity time graph you can see that in the cd region it, it is again having a constant velocity and in the position time graph it is corresponding to the region cd which is a straight line which is a straight line right at some slope that is equal to velocity Uh, displacement x is the area beneath the uh, velocity time curve right because where the formula for velocity is dis displacement upon time displacement upon time okay so we if we if we if we rearrange this formula then we will get velocity uh, the displacement is equal to velocity into time so velocity into time in the curve it is it will be corresponding to the area area under the curve lost into time will be corresponding to the area under the curve whereas uh, displacement upon time will correspond to the slope of distance uh, displacement time graph okay so in velocity time graph if we take the area under the curve okay that is going to give you the displacement your uh, gravitational force is acting all the time right so consider a tossed ball consider that a ball is tossed does gravity ever see stop no gravity is always there okay so gravity is constantly there uh, whenever you are in its field it will always be acting so as the ball travels in an arc does the gravitational force changes because you can see that uh, uh, your object is moving from one place to the another in this so gravitational force is not changing wherever you go on earth you will be experiencing the same gravitational force or the same acceleration due to gravity okay so there will be no change in the gravitational force but by breaking this motion because this motion is actually two way motion uh, one motion is object is moving along the y-axis so motion is along the y-axis as well as the object is also moving along the x-axis right so there are two types of motion one is vertical motion another is horizontal motion there are two components to this motion so by breaking the motion into independent parts analysis is simplified the horizontal and vertical motions are independent right because your vertical motion is being affected by the, for, the force of gravity or acceleration due to gravity whereas your horizontal uh, motion or horizontal motion is not being affected by the acceleration due to gravity right it is affected by the initial velocity or initial force with which the ball is being tossed Okay, is being thrown it is thrown uh, with what initial velocity it depends upon that your horizontal motion depends upon that and your vertical motion how high is it going to be okay it also depends on it depends upon the uh, initial velocity with which it was uh, it was tossed into the vertical direction okay what was the vertical component of the initial velocity as well as the acceleration due to gravity your vertical your vertical motion will depend on that so you can analyze the motion of an object by uh, 
breaking the motion or breaking the velocity into its constituent independent uh, parts so breaking the motion into two aspects or components that is the horizontal and vertical your horizontal uh, aspect or part will not be affected by the acceleration due to gravity whereas the vertical uh, component of the motion will be affected due to the gravity right because there is no uh, force that is acting on the horizontal direction so what will happen it will be traveling with constant velocity in the x-axis because the ball has been tossed initially with some initial velocity and thereafter there is no horizontal comp there is no force acting horizontally so in the horizontal direction your uh, ball will be moving with the constant velocity whereas in the vertical direction gravity is constantly acting on the body so there will be a constant acceleration so uh, motion or the velocity of the object will be constantly changing in the vertical direction so does the ball acceleration accelerate in the horizontal direction no because there is no horizontal force that is acting after it has been flipped into the air right but the there will be acceleration in the vertical direction because there is a force that is the gravitational force gravitational force that is acting vertically on this object so there will be acceleration in the vertical direction so what is a projectile motion projectile motion is when you throw an object at an oblique angle oblique angle right so it will have two component similarly uh, one component will be a horizontal component that will have it constant velocity and another component is vertical component that will have an initial velocity as well as the acceleration so that type of motion is known as projectile motion okay so all objects released at the same time with no vertical initial velocity will hit the ground at the same time right because they have the same initial velocity so throughout the uh, travel they will have same constant velocity so they will hit the ground at the same time Then they will hit the ground at the same time okay all the objects that are uh, released at the same time will hit the ground at the same time no matter what is their horizontal what horizontal velocity no matter what is their horizontal velocity they will all touch the ground at the same time why because their vertical initial vertical uh, velocity was same that is zero and then acceleration due to gravity acts on all these um, objects okay equally therefore they will be accelerating at the same speed so their initial velocity is the same their acceleration due to gravity is acting on them so their acceleration is the same so they will complete their vertical journey at the same time so they will touch the ground at the same time the horizontal velocity remains constant throughout the motion since there is no horizontal force after the initial force with which we threw the object thereafter there is no horizontal force so what happened the velocity of the objects will remain constant okay so imagine dropping the object and measuring how fast it's moving over consecutive one second interval okay so suppose we are dropping an object from a certain height and then we are uh, noticing the velocity after each consecutive one second interval okay at every one second interval we are noticing or recording the velocity the object is gaining 
the vertical component of velocity is changing because we know in the vertical direction in the free fall there is acceleration due to gravity so velocity is changing constantly by amount of 9.8 meter per second in the downward direction so there will be a constant increase in the velocity at every moment right so at every second the that increase is that that increase will going to be 9.8 meter per second so let us uh, look let us draw a table how will that uh, come out to be or what in which what form of the data it will um, form okay so let's approximate the acceleration as 10 meter per second so for our calculation for simplicity instead of 9.8 1 meter per second square we are uh, taking the acceleration due to gravity with the approximate value of 10 meter per second square so starting from the rest we are letting go or we are dropping the object okay so time is being divided into different intervals into different classes of the interval size of one second so as we know acceleration is constant throughout its journey that is 10 meter per second that we are uh, assuming or that we are rounding off to so what velocity at the end of interval how much it would be so after one second your velocity would how would you calculate the velocity simply there are three kinematic equation of the motion okay so one it is the time so t is one second uh, initial velocity is zero so that will be initial and a is 10 so we are getting 10 so velocity at the end of first interval is be is going to be 10 so similarly we can uh, calculate for each interval the initial velocity will be changing for every interval right the time and the acceleration will be the same but initial velocity will be changing for each interval so for the second interval the initial velocity would be 10 that is the uh, final velocity in the previous interval that is going to be the initial velocity for the next interval so this is how the uh, table is going to be if we just if we draw just these three columns so if we introduce more columns right like average velocity so in one second uh, suppose we are taking the first interval in one second in one second your uh, time in one second your uh, uh, velocity is going from 0 to 10 meter per second so but we can see that in this one second of interval the velocity is not the same so what would be the velocity how would you describe the velocity in this one second we can describe it by taking the average so what would be the average velocity in that interval so it is going to be um, total distance upon total time so how can we find out the total distance traveled in that one second v square minus u square equal to 2 as so v is is 10 final velocity is 10 initial velocity is 0 so that is 100 v square minus u square is 100 equal to 2 as 2 a is 10 so 2 as so s is going to be 100 divided by 2 a or in other words 10 by 2 10 by 2 so it is going to give you 5 similarly you can find out the average velocity for all the other uh, interval or the time intervals right and if you want to find out the distance moved or final position then similarly the distance moved in one second in one second would be five because this is the average velocity this is the average velocity in your one second so in one second it traveled according to its average velocity right so average velocity means that in one interval of the time in that interval the object has moved five meter that is that is what it 
mean by what it mean what it mean by the average velocity is going to be five meter per second that for that in one second your object moved five meter right so you can find out the uh, distance traveled for the other interval okay how you can use the same formula say other equation of motion okay other equation of motion that is v square minus u square equal to 2s and you can find out the corresponding distance traveled and you can find out the final position by like uh, by the column that is accumulating the that is giving you the cumulative uh, values okay that is accumulating the distance that it has traveled up to that interval so for the first interval final position is five the section the second interval the total uh, distance it has traveled or the final position is at 20 because it has moved 5 plus 15 that is 20 for the next interval at the end of the next interval it has moved 20 plus 25 that is equal to 45 so we are accumulating the previous value so we are uh, introducing a cumulative column so that is how you are going to get the final position okay so this, these are all these formulas that, uh, these are all the uh, equations of motion or kinematic equation of motion that we have used so there are basically three uh, kinematic equation of motion one is v equal to u plus at another one is v square minus u square equal to 2s third one is s is equal to ut plus half ut square right so you can uh, solve this type of problem by using these the same kinematic equation but but instead of uh, simply a here we have a constant that is g that we are going to use okay so what happens if you multiply an acceleration by a time because velocity velocity divided by time or change in velocity divided by change in time is going to give you acceleration if you multiply acceleration into time it is going to give you velocity okay so units of acceleration are meter per second so here unit of time are second result is meter per second that is same as that of the unit of velocity okay so in summary what have we learned in this that velocity refers to both speed and direction right acceleration means change in velocity and when the change in velocity is negative then it is known as retardation mass is the property of object that represents their reluctance reluctance to accelerate or change its motion okay your mass is the measure of inertia and inertia is the property that resists any change in its state of motion of an object right so if an object is accelerating it means acted up on by an unbalanced force f equal to ma so if an object is accelerating that means a force is being applied on that object gravity causes all object to suffer the same acceleration so all the objects no matter their masses will be falling towards the surface of the earth with the same acceleration okay uh, gravitational ac acceleration only affect the vertical component of motion not the uh, horizontal component okay so that's it.